Welcome back to another Hardware News Recap. For this week, we're kind of recapping again the NVIDIA NDA discussion that we posted previously on the channel. I'm joined by senior AMD correspondent Snowflake, who I, I don't know if she has anything to add to this episode, but we'll also be talking about Micron ramping their GDDR6 production, the GTX 1053 gigabyte card that has arrived officially, by the way, and TSMC ramping 7 nanometer production. Before that, this video is brought to you by our limited edition foil anniversary shirt. This shirt commemorates our 10 year anniversary design and is available in foil on a high quality cotton shirt, completely custom designed for GN. We're making a limited amount of these and then we'll never make them again. So get your pre-order in now to ensure you get yours. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to grab the GN foil teardown anniversary shirt now. Okay. <laughs> Okay, she's not a fan of the NVIDIA news items. We're killing the, killing the NVIDIA NDA discussion and the GTX 1050 discussion. You done? Thank you. <laughs> so, first one is GN at LTX. We're going to be, or I'm going to be specifically at Linus's Expo on July 14th, I think it is. So, uh, at LTX, I think they're doing a lot of stuff like case tosses, I think they're doing delitting, uh, instructional guidance and stuff like that. I've offered to assist with some kind of booth or some event or something like that. So anyway, I'll be there. If you show up, come say hi. Uh, if you bring a mod mat or something like that, I'd be happy to sign it. So first, uh, first real news item, NVIDIA's NDA discussion. This is just, okay, really? You're going to destroy my paper and then leave? Uh, this is just further clarifying on some comments. We did that video where I brought on a, a lawyer uh, and talked about the NVIDIA NDA that got kind of big news out of almost really seemingly nowhere. So one more point on that. A lot of things I saw, the comments I saw in that video, some of them were about, well, but this NDA will prevent GPP-2 from getting out in the future if there's a GPP-2. The, that specific sentiment, which seemed pretty common on Reddit and elsewhere, is uh, very incorrect because the thing is, an NDA doesn't just like, it's not like it just stops information. NVIDIA would have to give us the information confidentially and then say, this is under NDA. So a couple of things here about GPP. GPP, the original and as far as we know, the only version, it wasn't briefed to the press and so would not be covered under confidential information. It was not information provided by NVIDIA. It was found through third parties, specifically by hard OCP and Later, we and others talk to other third parties about it. So none of that would be considered confidential information, which is defined in the NDA document. It's in the first sentence. So you, if you have concerns about what is confidential information, read the first sentence and then read what applies. The whole thing is one page. Uh, and then there's a second page of signatures. So I would encourage you to actually read the document if you're concerned about something like that. The other thing is, uh, if there were something truly evil, like a GPP-2, NVIDIA wouldn't brief us on it anyway, so even confidentially. So if you're worried about something super evil not getting out because the press are under NDA, that's kind of a false premise. More likely, it wouldn't get out because the press wouldn't be told, and maybe eventually a third party tells us or someone figures out something evil is going on, whatever. That's not covered under confidential information. Separately, and I said this in the video, but I want to reiterate it here, information has a way of getting out. So if there's something really bad going on, I'm sure that it will find a way out somehow. So I, I wouldn't be worried about that either. Uh, also, if there were something legitimately illegal going on, there are protections for exposing those types of pra practices. So all of this is just to say the comments about well, this NDA is going to prevent a GPP-2 from happening. No, because GPP was not confidential information. It would not be covered under an NDA. It was from a third party. Hopefully I've made that clear now. Uh, so that specific concern is invalid. But anyway, it, it just honestly seems like a lot of people didn't read the document. They just read the comments in, in comment sections on Reddit and then parroted them. So seriously, if you have not read it, it's a very simple NDA. It is one page. I think it's like five or six actual paragraphs. It takes a few minutes. It's not that complicated. It's not like, it's not shrouded in legalese or anything like that. It's very plain language. 
Uh, if you've ever seen an NDA before, it shouldn't be that shocking. So I would encourage you to read it if you have concerns. Next one, next news item. Also, you can watch our discussion with the lawyer if you're curious about his take on it. Micron is ramping GDDR6 production. So this is pretty big news. Uh, Micron has announced that they are commencing production of their GDDR6 memory following their G5X memory. They're the only vendor who made G5X. And that means that Micron becomes the last of the big three to announce their mass production for GDDR6. Hynix has been in mass production for a little bit now, Samsung as well. Micron will initially be rolling out a few different eight gigabit chips for graphics, for self-driving or aut automotive applications and for networking. And Micron also has plans in the future for faster 16 gigabit per second chips. For reference, GDDR5 runs at between six and eight gigabits per second, eight on the high end, seven on the sort of GTX 1050 class cards. And also for reference, GDDR5X or G5X runs between 10 and 11 gigabits per second on average, uh, mostly on the high end NVIDIA, well, entirely on the high end NVIDIA cards. And Micron also noted that its first round of chips will be 10, 12, 14 gigabit per second modules at eight gigabits for the individual uh, units. And GDDR6 will supersede the decade old now GDDR5 memory format for graphics and also the more recent G5X is going to be better than that. The new memory will offer a density improvement up to 32 gigabytes capacity. The uh, memory also should have a lower operating voltage between 1.25 and 1.35 volts, which is a reduction from the G5 and G5X voltage of 1.5 to 1.6, sometimes a bit lower depending on the application. GDDR6 also stands to offer improvements in data rate overall, and Micron has successfully overclocked one of its GDDR6 chips uh, prototypes to 20 gigabits per second, showing some range. Not really, uh, probably not stable, or they'd ship it at that, but uh, it's possible to overclock them pretty high. So big improvement over GDDR5. We've previously discussed pricing of GDDR6, and we spoke with uh, supplier sources close to SK Hynix, who told us at the time that we should expect approximately a 20% increase in bomb or bill of materials price over GDDR5, with plans to lower that to closer to 10% later. So if a module costs $8 typically for one, add 20% and that's GDDR6. Next news item, GTX 1053 gigabyte cards have arrived if you needed more graphics cards. So the new graphics card that's entered the channel is still on Pascal, it's nothing new. It's the GTX 1053 gigabyte, which increases CUDA core count from 640 on the original 1050 to 768, which is actually exactly what the 1050 Ti uses for core count, CUDA cores, uh, if you were to call them that. We have a video on whether that's correct nomenclature elsewhere. And that puts it close to a 1050 Ti in specs. It also, the boost clock is increased now to 15, 18 megahertz recommended from NVIDIA, up from 1455 on the original 1050 and significantly higher than the 1050 Ti's base and boost, although manufacturers can change those. Memory speed remains seven gigabits per second. So the only major downside or downgrade to the 1053 gigabyte is a drop to a 96 bit memory interface bus width from 128. And that brings down the memory bandwidth to 84 gigabytes per second from 112 on both the 1050 and the 1050 Ti. And there's also obviously one extra gigabyte of memory on there up from two on the original 1050. The three gigabyte cards are expected to ship around $160, which is around the original 1050 Ti aftermarket card price, which we actually did not recommend 1050 Ti's at that price originally, but the market has changed substantially since then. Cards aren't as affordable as they should be. The EVGA SC model will be around 170. And again, considering video card prices for the last few months, it's really difficult to gauge value these days. Prices change every day. If everything were MSRP, that wouldn't be a good deal, but that's not really always the case right now. So I guess look around at other cards. The 570 would be a, a significant improvement over the 1050 or TI, but it's hard to find one. So uh, alternatively, a low-end 1060 would be a decent choice as well. TSMC is next in the news. TSMC has begun producing seven nanometer products commercially and hopes to make five nanometer in 2019 or 2020. The company's technology symposium in Taiwan directly refuted claims that seven nanometer yield was poor, leading to higher prices and lower volume as speculated. Instead, TSMC stated that it's actually emboldening its way for output by 9% for seven nanometer. The company is working on 50 taped out designs by end of year 2018, including major design focus on GPU, AI, and cryptocurrency ASICs. 
Apple's upcoming A12 processor will also impact TSMC 7 nanometer focus. The foundry already has a wait list of 20 customers for 7 nanometer, including AMD, Nvidia, Bitmain, and Qualcomm. Next up, Nvidia and IBM, in collaboration with numerous other partners, have helped the US usurp China as owner of the world's fastest supercomputer. The machine, dubbed Summit, has helped propel the U.S. back to the forefront of supercomputing and bested China's Sunway Taihu Light machine. Summit belongs to the Department of Energy's Oak Ridge National Laboratory and consumes 5,600 square feet of space. Summit scored 122.3 petaflops of compute performance on HPL, the benchmark that Top 500 uses to score supercomputers. Summit consists of 4,356 nodes, or compute servers, interconnected, each equipped with a pair of 22-core IBM Power 9 CPUs, 6 NVIDIA Tesla V100 GPUs, and it consumes 15 megawatts of power, where 1 megawatt equals 1,000 kilowatts. So uh, 15 megawatts would put you at 15 million watts. Sierra is another IBM built machine and represents the US and claims the number three slot. Sierra's design is similar to that of Summit's. Overall, the US claims 124 of the top 500 supercomputers, coming in behind China with 206 total systems. Summit was conceived to research the fields of human disease, astrophysics, fusion energy, and climate change. NVIDIA notes that Summit is capable of three exa ops of deep learning operations. Overall, not a bad way to spend $200 million. This next one's kind of interesting. Corsair has acquired Elgato, the streaming capture card company. Corsair recently got windfall from a venture capital firm, and as such, it seems like they've expanded their budget quite a bit. So rather than make their own streaming device and compete, they just decided to acquire Elgato, and they are now widening their focus to include game streamers. Now, as with most acquisitions, Corsair promises that Elgato will continue to operate largely independently without much influence or oversight from Corsair, uh, although that never really turns out to be the case. As long as it's overall positive, though, having more money is probably a good thing for the folks at Elgato. Corsair didn't disclose many details regarding the purchase, such as the price or any potential staffing changes, but they are looking to expand Elgato's reach in terms of products for streaming. NAND prices should continue to decline into second half of 2018 for the next news item. This is a report from DRAM Exchange and TrendForce, which suggests that the contract prices of NAND used on SSDs will continue to decline for the second half of the year amidst improved yield rates of current gen NAND, coupled with NAND market research, or reaching rather, a balance between supply and demand. NAND prices have been descending for two consecutive quarters now, opposite of the RAM prices almost, and suppliers are expected to postpone capacity expansion plans in an attempt to moderate the price decline. Uh, demand is expected to remain weak due to slow growth in notebooks, a lack of specification upgrades in smartphones, and less replacement demand overall. However, a looming iPhone release this fall could influence the NAND market heavily. Next up, Gigabyte reiterated the GPU shipment decline coming up. So in last week's hardware news, we mentioned reports that suggested a steep GPU decline in shipments overall due to mining demand shrinkage. And we had previous reports from JPR on the same subject. This week, Gigabyte basically confirmed that the GPU market is preparing for steep declines ahead for the second half of 2018 with Pascal primarily. Gigabyte expects their GPU shipments to fall 20% in second half, with ASP, or average selling price, to drop by about 10%. Gigabyte and likely other AIB partners will be shifting focus back to the gaming market, which should be a good thing for prices, and some of that is reflected already. So speaking of that, hardware sales for the week. GPU prices have actually been returning somewhat to MSRP. We'll link a couple of the better deals below in the description if you want one. Threadripper is more permanently dropped now. The 1950X is at $750. Original price was $1,000. It's a good deal. Just note that Threadripper 2 is coming out in August, and it, there's a reason they're dropping the price so much. We haven't tested Threadripper 2 yet. I don't have it, but given the improvements in Ryzen 2 or Ryzen Plus, if you prefer, over uh, the Threadripper or over the original launch, we could expect that similar improvements would be made for Threadripper 2. So, Either way, though, 750 is not a bad deal if you really need one and need it cheaper. Asus's Zenith Extreme is also down to $500 following this, and we'll link all of those in the description below. So as always, thank you for watching. If you want to pick up our limited edition shirt that I'm wearing right now, we have it on pre-order on store.gamersnexus.net. You can grab one there once they're all sold out. That's it. We're not making any more. And go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. It helps out directly. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.